Have you ever wanted to learn how to build games? All those cool effects, making things move, getting your imagination into the screen? Well, this tutorial series is for you. Hey, I'm Jerry from Blizz Studio. I'm the creator of the Apple featured game, Trixel Rocket. In this tutorial series, we're using Unity with Playmaker, the visual scripting tool, and other tools necessary to build games. In this particular video, what we're gonna be doing is learning how to use Playmaker to actually make things move. So if you're ready to get started, let's go. Where we left off, we've installed Unity, we've installed Playmaker and iTween, and we've actually added a sprite to our scene. So in this particular demo, I'm gonna show you how to use an FSM in Playmaker to make it move just by itself, so it's going back and forth with a, using an FSM. In Playmaker, an FSM is a finite state machine. So you can think of it as a scripting tool, which, which it is, in each of the states, you can apply actions. And you can have as many actions as you want in each of the states. So for a designer like me who doesn't know how to code, it's thinking logically through what you want to happen at a particular point in time, okay? Now, there's a lot of different ways that we can do that. We can animate it using the uh, Unity animation system or, uh, we can do that through script or there's a lot of different ways we can accomplish that, okay? So, but in this uh, instance, I wanna show you how to use and understand Playmaker and the FSMs, okay? So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and select the rocket. And the reason we're gonna select the rocket is we're gonna apply an FSM to the rocket, okay? Again, uh, an FSM is a finite state machine. After clicking on the rocket, you can see in the Playmaker window, it says right click to add FSM. Okay, so we need to do that. So we're gonna right click, add FSM, and here we go. We've got this state that says start and state one. Now, the states we can go in and we can name those whatever you want. And I like to name the states so that they are informational to me as I look at a complex FSM. So if there's a ton of different states, what am I doing in that state? So in this case, in this state one, we're not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna bypass this and go to a second state. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna create three states here real quick, or I'm gonna create two in addition to the state one. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new state, and then I'm gonna add one more state. Okay, so I've got a state one, state two, state three. Again, we're just gonna bypass state one. I, I usually like to do that unless I'm checking for something. But in this case, what we're gonna do is we just want our spaceship to move left, and then we want the spaceship to move right, okay? So here in the state two, I'm gonna rename this, title this move left, and you can put spaces in there if you want. You can name it however you want. I just, this is kind of like my own little convention. And then I'm gonna do the second state as move right. Now, in the FSMs or in the states, we've titled these states. Well, we haven't done anything else. This isn't going to accomplish anything for us. All we've done is just kind of name these nodes. And so what we're gonna do is to, first we need to link all of these states together. And in this particular FSM, what we're gonna do is it's just going to be a loop, okay? So it's gonna hit state one when the game plays then we wanna immediately go to, to move left, have that state play in action, and then when that's done, we're gonna to move to move right, have that play in action, then it's gonna go back to state one. Or we could just bypass state one and go to, to move left. So we're just gonna move this thing left and right, okay? So for me to go from state one to, to move left, I need to add a transition. And the way I'm gonna add a transition is to right click on that state. So I'm gonna right click. The very first item there is add transition. So I'm gonna hit finished. 
and then I'm gonna just click and drag on finished over to move left, okay? And then from move left, we need to add a transition. So we're gonna, so when we add an action, we're gonna, um, when it's finished playing that action, we wanna be finished with it and then move on to the next state. So we're gonna add another finished transition and then we're gonna drag that over to move right. And then do this again, add transition, finished. And then it, we can either go up to our state one and because there's not gonna be any actions in there, it's gonna immediately move to move left or I can just loop between these two. So I wanna, it's going to hit state one when it plays, immediately move into move left. When it's done playing that, it's gonna to go to move right. When it's done playing that, it's gonna go back to move left. Okay, so we've got the states kind of set up so where they're linking together, but if you click in any of these states, you can see that there are no actions here. So we actually haven't done anything that's going to make that spaceship move. Okay, so for us to do that, we need to add actions. So if you remember over in the very right hand column here, we've added the action browser. So these are actions that uh, are going to tell something to do something. Okay, so we've got effects, logic, math, physics, state machines, and so on and so forth. There's all kinds of stuff. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and use iTween. So this again is an animation system that's going to, to tell something to animate over time and apply easing to it and do all kinds of really cool stuff. And then when it's done, then move to the next state, okay? So if we open this up, and I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit, we can see in iTween there's a bunch of different actions, okay? These are actually full-blown C-sharp scripts. So we don't actually have to write code. All we're gonna do is just utilize code that's already been written. So you can see that there's items for look, move, punch, rotate, scale, shake, so on and so forth. So really cool stuff, and we're gonna be using a lot of these in future demos. But in this particular one, we want to use move. Now, with that being said, there are a bunch of different move options. So we've got iTween move add, iTween move by, move from, move to, move update. Okay, so, and there's different reasons why you'd wanna use each of these separately, okay? Which is really cool because uh, there's a lot of different instances when you'd wanna do that. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a move by, and you can see here's the options that are available to us in that, and I'm gonna click and just drag this right down into my state. So I have this state selected here, now I drag this action down. Now here's all the options that I can apply. Okay, remember we have the rocket selected. We're doing a state machine for that rocket. And then we've applied an action within the move left state. So what we wanna do is we wanna move, uh, first we wanna select the game object. And the game object currently is the owner, yes. We are, have the rocket selected and the, that's the owner of this FSM. Um, if we want to say, hey, move another game object, we can then go and specify a game object and then just drag and drop that into a window. But in this case, we're just gonna use the owner. Uh, we don't need to worry about an ID right now. Uh, if there are multiple game objects and you wanna say, hey, move an ID with this particular ID, or move an object with this particular ID, you can do that. But in this case, we're, we're good. The next thing we need to do is a vector, okay? You can see drop down has changed red. It's saying, hey, this is really, really important. And a vector is the coordinates, okay? So if we look at the game object, we have the game object selected, and in the inspector, you can see there's a transform. Transform, a vector is, there's two types of vectors. There's a vector two and a vector three that we're gonna use. So in a vector, there is the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis, okay? So this is a 2D game, uh, or that's the example that I'm showing. So uh, we could do a vector two, or we could do a vector three, and just ignore the z-axis. So x-axis is left and right. Y-axis is up and down, and then z-axis is in and out. So the further away from us or closer to us, okay? 
And then if you look on the screen, you'll see there's a little grid system. And then each of those little squares is one unit, okay? One meter. So if we want to move this ship, maybe two of those blocks, then we need to move that uh, by two, okay? So if we just drag the X axis, and you can see that if we move it left, the number that we have up here is a negative number, okay? So I'm gonna undo. If I click and drag to the right, you can see that it is a positive number. There's no minus sign, right? I'm gonna undo that real quick, and I'll do the same thing with the Y axis. If I move up, it's a positive number, and then if I move down, it's a negative number, okay? So that's, that's really important. So if we want to move it left, we need to new, move it negative. If we want to move it right, we move it positive. So there's a couple different ways that we can in, input the vector. So we can either create a variable, and not necessarily a global variable, it's a variable that we apply specifically to this FSM, or we can actually just type in the number. So we can either create a new variable, a variable that goes in the globals, which we don't need to do for this particular instance, or if we click on the double line button over here, we can actually just directly input the number, okay? Because this is move left, we, we need to move in which direction? A negative, okay? So I'm gonna do negative two. Okay, so we input a negative two. All right, so what's this? What's what's going to happen? It's going to say, hey, once we hit this action, or once we hit this state, move left by two, and then we the next item that we have in here is time. So how long do we want that animation to take? So uh, this is in number of seconds. So right now, currently, this animation would last one second. So we could change that to two seconds if we want it to move slower, so on and so forth. Uh, we can also input a delay, but I'm not going to get into all the details of these. The next thing we want to do is easing. Now easing is really cool and it's something that you should use in almost all your animations. The best way that I can describe easing is that if you, you are at a stop sign and you hit your foot on the gas pedal, does your car immediately go 70 miles an hour? Absolutely not, right? It's going to speed up over time, okay? That's easy. Same thing if you slam on the brakes, right? You're not gonna immediately stop. It's going to stop over a period of time. And hopefully if you're gonna crash, it's fairly quick. Uh, if not, you know, you might have issues. But anyway, that's the best way to describe easing. So there is ease in and ease out. And a lot of times you might wanna do ease in and, and out. If it's ease in, it's going to start fast and then end slow. If it's an ease out, it's going to start slow and end fast, okay? Or vice versa, I'm trying to think of that. Anyway, and then a lot of times if you use an ease in out, it'll start slow, go fast in the middle, and then end slow, okay? So again, it's just a matter of feel. And it's something that you can play with. Right now, I'm just gonna leave it as linear. Uh, loop type, do we want this thing to loop? In this case, no. Uh, the animation space, we're just gonna leave this as world, that's fine. Uh, look at, we're not gonna worry about that. And then events, this is important. So events, there's two options, start event and finish event. Well, you remember we have a transition over here that says finished. So once it's finished playing this animation, we wanna to move to move right. We wanna go over to this second state of move right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click and drag down to finished. Once it's finished playing this animation over one second, then it's going to transition to the next state. So the cool thing is we've already set this action up that makes this thing move. All we need to do is copy this action and then paste it over into move right and then change this from a negative two to a positive two. So let's do this. We're gonna go and the little gear icon right there, we're gonna copy selected actions. We're gonna go over to our move right state paste that in, so paste actions, and then change this from a negative two to a positive two. So it's gonna, the state machine is going to move our spaceship left for two, two units, and then when, when it's finished doing that, it's going to move it right for two units. 
Are you ready to see if this thing works? Let's do it. I'm gonna hit the play button up here. As you notice the game plays, you're gonna see that the each state is going to highlight in green as it's playing, okay? So it should hit this one and immediately go to move left, play that for a second, then move to move right, play that for a second, and then go back to move left. So let's give this a test. Boom, there we go. This thing is working. Cool. All right. So that is a simple state machine. Now, again, as we go through all these different tutorials, you'll notice that we will do more and more with these FSMs and apply more actions. Again, this is just one simple little action that we've applied to this spaceship. And normally you're not gonna be doing this for like the character. You're gonna wanna control the character, right? So it's really cool that we have uh, started using our FSM and Playmaker. We've made something move on the screen. And in the next demo, we're going to actually make this thing move using our keyboard inputs. In this demo, we learned how to use Playmaker, create an FSM with a state machine, and use that with actions to make something move. So in the next demo, we're actually going to start taking a look at using an FSM with key inputs to then make the game object move. And as always, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon so you know when the next video is available. Keep on creating.